Okay, uh, tonight we're going to have a teach back on the different chapters that you're supposed to cover before you take a midterm today. The important topic that I would start with would be what? Airway conditions or respiratory conditions, right? The first one would be on COPD. Does anybody know what is COPD class? <laughs> Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So obviously what organ system is involved here? The lungs and the respiratory system as a whole, right? So as you can clearly see here in our diagram here, I have made an illustration of when we inhale, we can either inhale through the nose or through the mouth, we bring in air rich in oxygen, goes into the nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx, then the larynx, where you have the uh, glottis and the glottic opening, and then there's the epiglottis, and then you have here what, the trachea, primary bronchus, right? Secondary, <coughs> tertiary bronchus. So we're only concentrating on the left lung. You have three lobes in the right lung. How many lobes do you have in the left? Two. 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 And then from there to the bronchioles, alveolus, and the pulmonary capillaries, where the exchange of gases will take place. When you breathe air in, oxygen goes here, goes into the blood, just put it in the red blood cell. Goes into the left side of the heart. On the other hand, the pulmonary trunk carries deoxygenated blood, carrying carbon dioxide, Carbon dioxide will diffuse from high concentration to low, and what do you do with the carbon dioxide? We exhale them, because we do not need them, right? They're waste products, correct? Okay. When we're dealing with COPD conditions, what is the common denominator? The word airway one? Obstruction. obstruction. So there is an obstruction in the airway. So, as I mentioned to you before, your objective is to determine on how you can learn best. Organized material, either with the use of tables like this, or concept maps, right? Now, bear in mind that you have to know where the pathology is. So you have to know your anatomy, what is normal, then you know what is abnormal. In the case of asthmatic patients, how many of you are asthmatic here? I can see one hand, I can see one hand. Okay, do you know where the problem is? Where is the problem in an asthmatic patient? The two of you who raised your hand, yes, my dear. Where? In the bronchi. Yes, you? You said bronchi? Yes? Or bronchi? Yes? Bronchi. Bronchioles? Okay, who says bronchioles? Who says bronchi? Who says trachea? Okay. <laughs> so, in asthmatic patients, the problem is where? In the bronchioles. Why? This is made of cartilage, the trachea, larynx, trachea, and bronchus, primary, second, tertiary. What is found in the wall of your bronchioles? Smooth muscles. If you suffer from an asthmatic attack, especially if it's a cold, what you call extrinsic asthma, what happens? You're exposed to an allergen like the pollen, you know, in summer, the, the hair of the dog, the cat. It causes an allergic reaction. What happens? IgE mediated. Remember the immunoglobulin E for allergy? What happens? This muscles will contract. It's called muscle spasm or bronchospasm. And when these muscles contract, what happens? They have bronchial what? Constriction. So instead of like this, it narrowing of the airways because the muscles contract. It leads to bronchoconstriction or bronchospasm. So the problem is in the bronchioles, and the problem is going to affect what? Airway obstruction. It causes airway obstruction because why? There will be what? Narrowing of the airways, right? Narrowing because of bronchial constriction and spasm. Now, will there also be increased, increased mucus production? Yes. Yes. There will be increases because there will be inflammation, right? Increased mucus. So you have a combination of bronchial spasm and mucus production, okay? Many also of these uh, allergy, uh, um, asthmatic attacks are triggered by what? Infection, like a cough or cold, right? Have you noticed that for those who are asthmatic here? Okay. So, would you have difficulty of breathing for signs and symptoms or shortness of breath? Yes. yes. Do you have dyspnea? Yes. Yes. Will you have to use, will you have nasal flaring? Yes. yes. Will you use accessory muscles of breathing? Yes. Of course, sometimes, right? 
And most importantly, you have this, what we call... <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> Do you like my wheezing sound? When somebody is wheezing, it means there is what? Narrowing of the airways, as if it's an... Remember I'm familiar with the flute or the recorder? I used to play that when I was in high school and elementary school in the Philippines. I went to a school called Silliman and we used to play that. And we produce sound, same thing. We produce a sound called <laughs> wheezing, okay? Now, is it good or bad when you have wheezing? Bad. bad, because it causes airway obstruction, right? Okay, so if the problem is this, what do you think would be the drug of choice? Something that would open up what? The airway, so it would be a bronco what? Okay, what does a bronco do? Dilate your do? So most likely, what would be the effect on the smooth muscles? Make it relax or make it relax? Okay, if you relax the muscle along the wall of the bronchioles, then you end up with bronchodilation. Now, the two of you who raised your hand, do you have your bronchodilators with you right now? Can you show it to your classmates? You have your... Yes, what is, the, what is that? Is that albuterol, terbutaline, or what is it? Ventolin, albutamol, albuterol? Okay, you puff? So that it will open up your airways, right? Mm -hmm. What about you, my dear? I don't have one. Why, why not? I don't really need You don't need it. What happens if you have an attack now? I won't have any. I never had an attack. You never had an attack? When was the last time you had an attack? Maybe when I was younger. Very young. No, no, okay. But still, because you have a history of asthma, if, if, what if it attacks you again, right? So the good thing is that you have it with you. Some students, they leave it in the car. <laughs> good or bad? You're going like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Where's my inhaler? It's in the car. How long will it take you to walk to the car? Four or five minutes? How long it takes for you to become brain dead without oxygen to your brain? Four to five minutes, perhaps, or five minutes, okay? If you don't believe me, okay, let's do an experiment. Go over your mouth, go over your nose. Time yourself. <laughs> Just kidding. And watch out when you pass out, okay? Wake up, wake up. You're dead already. You're ahead of it, okay? Now, broker the letters. What else? Are we going to give something for the mucus? You can give what? A mucolytic drug, your escarboxymethyl cysteine. But some people would say the best mucolytic is actually water, right? Okay? And very often we what? We nebulize the patient, right? I remember the time when I was a medical student a few years back in the 1980s, and I created a very big hospital called the Philippine General Hospital. They always come early in the morning. It was so crazy. You know, at, at three in the morning, four, and you're half asleep because you're working the whole day, waking this white uniform with a stethoscope on your neck, and then you can hear <laughs> like a symphony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nurse, man, and we were so fast. The nurses were so good. They were so smart, you know. So even though we don't tell them what to do, they don't really know what to do. <laughs> they neb we nebulize the patient, get the vital signs. Of course, they have the chart with them and then they feel better and we send them home with home meds, okay? If there's a need for antibiotics with an infection, we give what? Antibiotics, right? Okay? And of course we have what? Uh, if there's a need to, you know, if there are a lot of secretions, pulmonary drainage, chest percussion, and all this thing, right? Okay. Now in the case of, so if it's asthma, it's in the bronchioles. What about bronchitis? Of course in the bronchi, right? And there is what? Inflammation of the bronchitis, it's called itis, right? Bronchitis. And therefore, if it's inflammation, if you have read your book, and if you're preparing for the signature assignment, what happens here? What's the pathology here? There is hyperplasia and what? Increase in the number of mucous glands, which creates what? Over secretion of mucus. And most of these are seen in people with what? How many of you smoke here? Okay, what does smoking do to the cilia? Destroy the cilia. Now, remember the cilia is found here, right? In the areas, right? When you were my student in anatomy, what did I say? No. Think of me as Dr. Gabo of the cilia. What's my name? The cilia, okay? So I go like this, right? You like my dancing? The undulating movement of the cilia, pretend it's mucus, mucus. I'm cilia one, cilia two, cilia three. So cilia one will give it to cilia two, cilia three, and what happens to the mucus? The mucus gets out. So it's, that's why we call it mucociliary clearance, from the word to clear. The mucus, because what if you don't clear the mucus, the mucus remains here, what will the mucus do? Obstruction. Block the airway, causing airway what? Obstruction. Causing airway what? Obstruction. Causing airway what? Obstruction. Repetition is the mother of all retention, so that hopefully you will not forget that you will always, and you get a perfect score in the test, right? Very good. Now, 
So, would you have S O B or shortness of breath? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Would you also have now? What is the chronic definition of chronic bronchitis? Can anybody tell me, based on your extensive readings, what is the definition of bronchitis? A patient should have what? Productive yes. cough or yellow phlegm for how long? Oh, three months duration oh, two and successfully for two years. Yeah. Very important, right? Three months duration of productive cough and then for two successive years, that is the definition of chronic bronchitis. Chronic because it, you're talking about years here, right? Six months or years, right? Okay. Now, you'll notice because the problem happens to be almost the same. There are signs of symptoms of these, dyspnea of these, right? And in later stages, they're called blue bloaters. Why are they called blue bloaters? The lack of oxygen causes the discoloration of the skin to turn yellow, blue. It's called cyanosis, right? Lack of oxygenation, okay? Blue bloater, B, 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 B. Bronchitis, blue, blue, blue bloater. Okay, so treatment would be the same, more or less, right? Except you have bronchodilators, eucalyptic drugs, nebulizers, and of course, it's an infection, you give antibiotics, and stop what? Smoking. Okay. Okay? Now, I forgot to mention, in asthmatic patients, sometimes we use what we call an EpiPen, intramuscular injection of epinephrine, or what we call adrenaline, because it's also a bronco what? Then they turn, okay? So we inject EpiPen. And what else? In what we call status asthmaticus, what does it mean? You've given all the bronchoid dilators, you've done all of your thing, you nebulize the patient, nebulization was done, but still they don't respond. Then it's called status asthmaticus. What do we give these patients in form of drug? We give them what? Steroids, okay? For status asthmaticus. Now, in the case of bronchitis, we give the same thing, can we give antibiotics? Yes, we do, okay? But it's most importantly is to stop smoking. Does it make sense? So the problem here is here, bronchitis, here, bronchus, that's why it's called bronchus, bronchitis, asthma, bronchial. The smooth muscles are interspasm, your bronchospasm. So this is the site of the pathology. Well, this is for what? Bronchitis. So it's very important that you correlate what you know in normal anatomy and abnormal anatomy. Okay, so there is area obstruction here because of the excessive mucus production because of the hyperplasia of the mucus glands in the wall. And at the same time, there is what? Spasm here for asthmatic patients. What about emphysema? Where is the problem in emphysema? What part of the respiratory tract is involved? The alveolar. alveolar wall. Okay. Yeah. What happens to the alveolar wall? It's destroyed. Destroyed. Why? Okay, there's no more time. Can I answer my own question? Is due to what? Yes? It's called protrolytic enzymes, right? Okay. What will destroy it? Protrolytic enzymes. Look up. So who are predisposed? Now again, it's related to smoking. But not everybody who smokes develops this condition. Only those with a deficiency of what? Alpha 1 anti-trypsin. So what this substance do is to what? Inhibit the enzyme that destroys the wall in the alveolar wall. So if the enzyme destroys, so what does proteolytic mean? Proteo means protein. Is that found in the wall in the alveolar wall? Yes. And is this enzyme going to destroy the wall? It will. Will this protect you from that particular enzyme? Alpha-1 antitrypsin. Yes, it will protect you. Unfortunately though, People with emphysema, what is the problem? They have what? What levels are found here? Low. They have a deficiency of this alpha-1 antitrypsin. Are you able, therefore, to protect yourself? No. You cannot protect yourself. That's why the proteolytic enzyme creates havoc on the wall, destroying the wall. Now, why is the wall important? Remember the type 1 pneumocyte and type 2 pneumocyte, right? Type 2 surface surfactant, but type 1 is the exchange of gases takes place there, right? Oxygen goes into the air, and from the air sac to the blood, and carbon dioxide goes out here to be excreted, exhaled. Will that affect the exchange of gases if you destroy the alveolar wall? Yeah. 
definitely it will, right? Does it make sense to you? Do you understand? How important, therefore, is anatomy and normal anatomy and pathology? We always have to correlate them. My role here is to facilitate the learning process. With the limited time we have, all I do is to what? Tickle your brains. And you will ask, oh my God, Dr. Gamu is right. I need to know my anatomy to understand. Where is the pathology? Asthma, bronchioles. Bronchus pasta, will smooth muscles contract. If it's extrinsic, triggered by an allergenic substance. If it's bronchitis, smoking destroys the cilia. There is hyperplasia of the mucus glands secreting a lot of mucus. Coughing for two months, after three months, and then for two successive years, there's bronchitis, they become blue bloaters. For emphysema, we call them what? Big puffers, okay? And do they have a borrowed chest? Yes. Do they have SOB or shortness of breath too? Because there's problems with exchange of gases taking place, right? So dysmia, SOB, because all three of them, what is the common denominator? Obstruction. Airway obstruction. Chronic, it's not just acute. Does that make sense to you guys, okay? Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to show here? Okay, treatment more will be the same. Brokerage dilators, mucolytic drugs, okay? And then of course, nebulization, and if there's an infection, you give that uh, antibiotic treatment. But the bottom line is that it's something that is easy to treat, okay? Do you understand? So, area of structure. Now, what is restrictive lung disease? In restrictive lung disease, it's very simple. What it means is that in CRLD, or chronic restrictive lung disease, the problem is the ability of the lung to what? To expand. And therefore, affecting exchange of gases, right? Remember, if you recall, the lung is surrounded by what? The pleura, right? On the surface of the lung, you have the visceral what? Pleura. And what is attached to the thoracic wall? Parietal. Pleura. If you remember, the pleura is a serous membrane that secretes what? Serous fluid in the form of pleural fluid. What's the purpose of the fluid there? Lubrication, like your natural KY, right? You have tried KY, right? Good for lubrication, reduces the surface uh, friction. Every time you inhale, there is no pain, right? No. So what would affect expansion of the lung? One of them would be what? What about if you have pneumonia, right? Lungs have problems within the parenchyma itself. You can either have bacterial pneumonia, viral pneumonia, or tuberculous pneumonia. One of the most important conditions we need to know is about tuberculous pneumonia. What is the co organism causing this? Mycobacterium tuberculosis, right? Okay. And how do we get this? Air, droplet spray, right? Okay. And what are signs and symptoms here? Basically, it's about fever. Night sweats, okay, cough, fever, and in worst cases, you have what is hemoptysis? Blood. Okay, coughing out blood in sputum. In severe cases, coughing, loss of weight, loss of appetite, right? And what is the best diagnostic test here? Are we going to do an x-ray? Yes. Is that the best? No. no. What about the Manto test, M-A-N-T-O-U-X? Okay, in the mind, it's the name of the test. You inject what we call PPD or what? Tuberculate. What does PPD stand for? Purified protein derivative, okay? You inject that substance into your skin and you wait for how many days? How, what is the earliest time that you will let the patient come back? 48 hours. When, when, when does it become positive? When it, after 48 hours, there is what? Induration, it's red, it's erythema. Indurated means it's hard and it's elevated. Because that is what? An immune reaction to the body, that means you had a prior what? Exposure to tuberculosis. And therefore your body develops antibodies, but basically what happens is that your body is strong. But does it mean that you have the infection? No. We don't know. So what is the next step? We check, we do what? A chest x-ray, right? To find out if you have active TB or not. Now, but most importantly, in any form of infection in the lung, what is the best diagnostic test? Sputum what? CS, of course, very good. So you need the patient to cough out the sputum. Is it saliva or sputum? Sputum. And make sure that you tell them the proper instructions. Sir, I don't want you to spit, I want you to cough out the sputum. And put it in a sterile container and of course you will be able to see whether there is what? 
mycobacterial tuberculosis. And then you do a sensitivity test, culture and sensitivity test. And treatment, of course, I don't have to go into the details. You will discuss it when you go to core nursing. Remember all kinds of medication. And uh, you will know what each of these drugs will have their own mechanism of action, okay? Now, what about if it affects the pleural cavity? You can either have what? Pneumothorax or what? Hemothorax. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have a, how many of you have been stabbed before in the chest? <laughs> no one, okay. Who wants to be a volunteer? I will stop. I have this joking. If I stop you here, will the air outside go inside? Yes. yes. Can it occupy the space? Yes. yes. So if this is occupied by air, should it be there? No, because it should have been what? How thin should the uh, pleural fluid be? Paper thin. Because it's just for lubrication. The moment there's air, it's called pneumothorax, will it push the air sacs to one side? Yes. Will it, it cause the trachea to shift to the contralateral side? This will come out in the nursing board exam. The trachea will shift to the opposite side because the air will push them to one side. The air sacs like balloons that will collapse. And when they collapse, will there be exchange of gases? No. 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 Can you die? Yes. Yes. So we have to insert a what? HS2, yes. right? To be able to let their lung re-expand. Okay? Time is of the acid thing, right? Hemo means what? Blood. Gunshot wound, stop wound. There's not just air, but there is bleeding, there's blood. You can, can you have pneumohemothorax? Yes. yes, you can. Do you understand? Okay, combination of both pneumothorax and hemothorax, right? Okay, what about mu mu muscle weakness, like muscular dystrophy, okay? Yes. Have you heard of muscular dystrophy when you have weakness? It can expand the lung, right? So the problem is here restrictive. A while ago we talked about obstructive lung disease. Okay, is that clear so far? Okay, now let's move on. The other thing I'd like to discuss with you today is about what? In relation to this, might as well, acid-base disturbances, right? Okay? What is the normal pH of the blood? 7.352. 7. If the blood is acidic, it's below. less than 7.35. And if the blood is alkaline, alkaline, the blood pH would be what? Greater than 7.45. Because the range is ranged between 7.35 to 7.45. Acidic, that's at 7.35. Alkaline, greater than 7.45. Are you following me? Okay. What is the normal PCO2? 35 to 45. Okay. What about your bicarbonates? 22 to 26. Okay. In your book, I think they mentioned 34 to 44, but mine is easier to remember 35 to 45. Mm -hmm. PCO2 would be a PT, PO2. 80 to 100, okay? So let, let's have a condition here. When you say respiratory acidosis, what do you think is involved? What system? No. Of course! So respiratory acidosis versus what? Alcohol. Alkalosis. Okay, again, what am I using here to illustrate a comparison based on a table, okay? In respiratory acidosis, there is what? Involvement of both here will be the lung, and the airways, right? Okay. So I'll give you an example. When you have COPD, pneumonia, asthma, bronchitis, and CRLD, combination of lung conditions, will that affect the acid-based status of your patient? Yes. Pneumonia, you have a lot of secretions. Bronchitis, you have a lot of secretions. What will that do to the airway? It blocks the airway, therefore, if you have a lot of mucus, Will the mucus be able to go out? Yeah. It blocks the airway, okay? Now, what about the CO2? If the CO2 is not able to go out, where does the CO2 go? It goes back to the blood. What happens to the blood levels of CO2? Will it go out or will it go up? Go up. The CO2 will go up. Mm -hmm. So it will be greater than what? 40. 45, right? Does it make sense to you guys? Yes. Okay? Why? Because you were not able to exhale, it goes back to the blood. That's the reason why the levels are high. Now, remember, if you combine CO2 plus H2O, you form H2CO3. What does H2CO3 mean? Carbonic one. Acid. Acid. Okay? Every time you think of high levels of CO2, think of what? Acid. Does it make sense? Okay? Now, what is the definition of an acid? A substance that can donate what? A hydrogen ion, right? So you can go become hydrogen ion 
and it becomes a base. What is that base? Bicarbonate base, right? You understand? So from an acid, if it donates, it becomes a base in the form of bicarbonate. Now anyway, the bottom line is that anything had to do with pneumonia, COPD, can lead to respiratory so acidosis. Your pH will be what? Less than 7.35. Your PCO2 will be greater than what? 45. Okay? Now I do not want to go into compensation, but obviously the kidney will help to help how? Retain the acid or get rid of the acid? Get rid of the acid and retain the base to the kidneys. That's real compensation. Now, what is the treatment here? Very simple. Get rid of the obstruction, treat the pneumonia, treat the infection. So are we going to give mucolytic? Yes. Bronchodilators? Yes. yes, we do. Are we going to nebulize the patient? Yes. Are we going to do pulmonary facial therapy? Yes. yes, we do. And then if there's an infection, are we going to treat the infection yes. with an antibiotic? Yes. The same thing. Because by getting rid of the problem of airway obstruction, yes. then the CO2 levels will be back to normal. Now, what about here? Here, think of the word anxiety attack. Hyper what? Ventilation. I'll give you an example. Let's pretend I am an 18-year-old woman who just broke up with a boyfriend. Oh my God! What do I do now? I just broke up with my boyfriend. Every time he does that, she's hyperventilating. What is coming out? Carbon dioxide. Where's the carbon dioxide? In the air, right? Okay, so if you're hyperventilating, therefore, what will be the effect on your PCO2 levels? It will be less than 35, you become what? Remember acid, CO2 plus water is acid in the lungs. You become what? Alkaline, alkalosis, the pH will be what? Greater than, and your PCO2 levels will be what? Less than 35. Here it's more than 45, it will be less. Does, does that make sense? Okay? Now how do we treat this patient? Are we going to give them a brown bag? Yes. Every time they hyperventilate, they exhale CO2, but they will be able to what? Re-inhale when they have a brown bag. Are we going to sedate them, give them something to make them relax, like probably just a small of a dose of value? Maybe it depends on the doctor, right? But most importantly, what? Counseling, right? So if the woman says, oh my God, Dr. Gamma, oh, what will I do now? I just broke up with my boyfriend. Then look for another boyfriend, duh. <laughs> and counseling. These are young people. <laughs> it's very, although it can happen to men too, but I think it's more of women. Right? Oh my God, have you ever seen a guy, oh my God, I just woke up with my girlfriend, what do I do now? Yeah. Okay. I'm not trying to be sexist, but what? <laughs> now, do you understand? Yes. Okay, do you, do you see the picture here? Okay. Now, what about metabolic problems? Very simple. It has nothing to do with what? The lung. As simple as that, right? Okay, so, example. Metabolic alkalosis. Example is what? When you vomit, right? Yeah. Okay, when you vomit, what is found in your stomach? Acid. Hydrochloric acid. So look at me now. Acid in my stomach, if vomit, where's the acid now? On the floor. OMG, oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> if the acid is on the floor, I'll become what? Alkaline. Does it make sense to you guys? Yeah. So my pH will be what? Greater than 7.45. Okay, very good. Okay. On the other hand, if I have diarrhea, in diarrhea, remember? <laughs> the intestinal and pancreatic secretions are what? Base. Yeah. So the base goes where? In the toilet bowl. Or oh, not the floor because I don't make poop on the floor. <laughs> and guess what? The basic or alkaline intestinal and pancreatic secretions will go out of the body into the toilet bowl and you become what? Acidic because it's basic. Intestinal and pancreatic secretions. So your pH will be what? Less than 7.35. Does it make sense to you guys, right? Yeah. What about if you have diabetic ketoacidosis, like in type 1? Ketoacidosis means you have a lot of ketone bodies. Definitely that will be what? Metabolic what? Acidosis. Does that make sense? Okay? There's nothing to worry about these conditions then. Okay? Now, briefly, because there's no more time, but I want you to understand 
very simply in a few sentences, fluid volume overload and excess or deficit, right? Or excess breaks and deficit, right? Fluids. Remember class, 66% of your body weight is what? Water. water. Is that important? Where do you find most of this water? Inside the cell or outside the cell? Inside the cell. Inside. Because who needs the water? The cell. That's the reason why it has to be the cell, inside the cell. Intracellular, right? Okay. So deficit. Fluid deficit versus what? Overload. Overload. Okay. As a general rule, anything that has to do with heart failure, kidney failure, liver failure, what do you have? It's the reason why you have what? In kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, you have periorbital edema. You can have anasarca where you can have swelling of the entire body, bipedal edema, ascites. People with liver failure, they develop jaundice, right? They have anasarca and they have what? They're very thin, but they have this big tummy because of what? Fluid in the abdomen called ascites, right? Okay. What about heart failure? Bipedal edema. We talked about this before, remember? Mm -hmm. The difference between right-sided versus left-sided heart failure. You have what? Left-sided, pulmonary edema. Right-sided, you have peripheral okay. edema, right? Hepatospinomegaly with ascites, right? Okay, what else? Here, let's deal first with the GI tract. When you have diarrhea, right? How many of you have experienced diarrhea in the past? If you do not raise your hand, you are not human, okay? You must be an alien. I don't know what planet, maybe Mars, or they're laughing at my joke, okay? So be honest, I don't mind. I don't want you to be afraid to tell me what, who you really are, okay? You're pretending to be human in my class, and you just want to learn and go back to Mars or whatever planet you come from, okay? And I hope people from Mars also have diarrhea, okay? <laughs> okay, what else? So vomiting, right? Yes. But not as much as when you're okay? <laughs> what about when you're bleeding, gotcha tool and all this thing? Of course. Because the blood contains water. Water is plasma, right? Bleeding, stomp, gotcha tool and all this thing, right? What about burn injury? Skin. Yes. Yes? Because before the skin was supposed to protect you against infection and fluid loss. Now everything is destroyed, the skin in third degree burns, and when there's excessive amount of burn injury, OMG. Treatment of burn patients therefore requires what? fluid resuscitation, replacement, right? Plus, of course, treating the infection and the burn injuries itself. And look at the lung if it's also involved, okay? Burns, okay? Now, remember what I told you about the hormones? Remember the word aldosterone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Aldosterone, what does this hormone do? Water what? Retention. Retention. So in Addison's disease, you have less what? Aldosterone, it makes the kidney what? Will it be able to let, make the kidney retain the water? No. no. So you have what? Poly urea in Addison's disease. And can that lead to hypovolemia and hypovolemic shock when you have Addisonian crisis? Yeah. Yes. And that kill you. Yeah. Remember the word hypovolemic shock, right? Why is there polyuria? Because there is decreased levels of aldosterone. On the other side, you have Cushing's disease, right? Yeah. Here you have high levels of what? Aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, otherwise known as the mineral corticoid. Therefore, you have what? Water retention, fluid volume overload. What will be the effect on your volume of blood pressure? High. Here, blood pressure drops. Here, blood pressure goes up. Because you have hypervolemia, hypovolemia here. Now, just like, because there's no more time, let me just talk about the effect of this hormone on electrolytes too, right? Hormone like aldosterone basically would allow you to what? Re retain what? Sodium. Sodium. So if you have high levels of this hormone, you have what? Hypernatremia greater than what? 145 milliequivalents per liter. On the other hand, here in Addison disease, you have what? Less than 135, hypo what? Natremia. Who do you think will benefit with the sodium chloride NaCl IV fluid solution? The one with hyponatremia. Am I going to give sodium chloride solutions here? No, no. no because you're going to make the patient get worse and the patient could. And you will lose your license. I don't even have your license yet, my dear students. That's the reason why this class will make you pass the nursing board exam. You better make sure you get an A in this class. You understand? What about potassium? This hormone promotes what? 
excretion by the kidney. So from the adrenal cortex to the blood, goes to the kidney, tells the kidney, hey, you know what, excrete the potassium. So if you have a lot of these, here high aldosterone levels, if you let the potassium be excreted in the kidney through the urine, you have hypo what? Hypokalemia, less than 3.5. Here, it is, will be what? Hyper K, greater than what? Five million equivalents per liter. Who do you think will benefit with a banana? Hypokalemia in a Cushing disease because they lack potassium. Banana contains potassium. On the other hand, am I going to give a banana here? No, no I don't because it will make it worse. Do you understand how important anatomy is and physiology is in the work that you do as nurses? Does it make sense to you? Okay. Now, calcium levels, normal value is what? In your book, I think there's mention of 4.5 to 5.5 millikilograms per liter, right? I just want to show this. Um, have you heard of CH Vostek sign? Yeah. Okay, what is Vostek sign? When you tap the facial nerve here, in front of the ear, it will cause what? Spasm of the side of the face, right? Okay. It's called what sign? Vostek. Okay. Facial nerve, muscle spasm in the face. Now, what about your zone? Your zone. Okay. So what you normally do is you get a cuff from a sphygmal manometer. You pop the cuff here in the arm. And normally between the 120 to, let's say, 80 or 100. You take it for three minutes. And what will be the effect? Carpal spasm. Carpal pedal spasm, but more like this. Keep it for three minutes, and then what happens to the hand and wrist? This, okay? Is that a positive true zone sign? Yeah. And if you have positive chibostic sign, there will be muscle twitching. Is that an indication of hypocalcemia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now remember this, again, going back to the hormones. Which world hormone will lower the blood calcium global? Calcitonin or calcitonin? <laughs> Why? Because the hormone calcitonin from the thyroid gland, what does it do? This is the bone, you have a blood vessel here, the calcitonin from the thyroid gland, will make the calcium where? In the blood go where? To the bone, making the bone stronger, but it will lower the blood calcium levels. What is the hormone that's opposite of this? Parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid gland. That hormone will cause the calcium in the bone to go where? Into the blood, causing it to go up. So be aware, you can either have hypoparathyroidism hypo, hypo or what? Hyperparathyroidism. The bottom line is that these two hormones will affect your blood calcium levels. One will lower the blood calcium, which is calcitonin from the thyroid gland, and one will increase the blood calcium level, which is, happens to be the parathyroid hormone, which of course comes from the parathyroid gland. Do you understand, class? Okay? So, whether it's fluid volume overload or it's ex uh, excess, whether it is or deficit, and then some of the electrolytes I've mentioned, and you see the importance of knowing your hormones and what it does to the body. And of course, I talk about COPD and CRLD, okay? We can now have a very, very short five-minute break and we will have the major exam, okay? <laughs>